Well, hello, ChangePoint family. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you are joining us separately, not at the end of the worship service, I have a wonderful guest today. This is Sharon Bronet from the Heart Gallery of Alaska. Say hello, Sharon. Hi. Uh, so uh, we had you on stage, but there are going to be people joining us uh, who were not uh, here for the worship service. So uh, the Heart Gallery of Alaska is one of the many ministries of Beacon Hill. Uh, and for people who are not familiar with Beacon Hill, they're one of our ministry partners. Would you just give us kind of an overview of the ministries that Beacon Hill is a part of? Sure. Thanks. Um, so Beacon Hill is involved with um, uh, families um, in crisis and with children sort of from the, the, on the full spectrum of child welfare in the state of Alaska. Um, so we've got um, Safe Families for Children, which is really um, uh, an effort to just prevent um, abuse and neglect by surrounding families with community and providing a safe place for children to be um, while you know their parents maybe have some uh, things that they need to get in order. Sometimes it's a hospitalization, you know, and a parent wouldn't have family around. So, you know, they can uh, give a call to the Safe Families Hotline and um, and, you know, just request somebody to care for their children for a period of time. And then, you know, once the, the hospitalization is over, or the baby is delivered or whatever, you know, the homelessness crisis is, is dealt with, whatever the issue is, then um, those children go right back to, you know, mom and dad. And, and uh, but with then uh, a circle of support around them, uh, hopefully that those relationships that are built in that process will continue. So uh, that's Safe Families for Children. Yep, so that's that number is one, Safe Families for Children. Number one, Safe Families for Children. Number yes. two, we Thank have. you. Number two, um, we have a, a family support center. It is located here in Anchorage. The, and then we do, we just recently opened another one in the Matsu Valley. Yes, yes. So, so we've got two family support centers now where um, families can, who are involved in foster care, so the children are you know, uh, living in foster homes and, and parents are doing their, you know, reunification work. Um, so it's really significant that these families have regular contact um, sure. and so that they can stay connected. And so as part of their case plans, you know, there's this regularly scheduled visitation. And so that's what's going on at the family support centers is supervised visitation so that these um, kids can go back to, you know, their parents. So Safe Families for Children, Family Support Center, now available in the Matsu Valley. That's right. What's number three? All right, and so then there's the Heart Gallery. So um, about half of the kids who come into foster care ultimately will need to be adopted in, in Alaska. Um, and so um, we are involved with a very small number of those children. We believe that there are about 150 youth at a given time in Alaska who need to be adopted and who don't have an identified permanent home. And a small fraction of those then may be referred to the Heart Gallery and then they would have um, pictures taken and we would uh, get some information um, from the children themselves and from those close to them about you know just who they are as the, the precious individuals that God made them. And we would include that on their profile online on the Heart Gallery website and then in print format in some of our communities too, just to um, make families aware that there are these children who need to be adopted. So what is the Heart Gallery website? Where can people go if they're joining us online right now? Where yep. can they go? You can go to heartgalleryak.com. And oh. yep. Heartgalleryak.com. So yep. if you've not seen these, they're really cool. Uh, they take these beautiful photographs of the kids and they do these really nice write-ups that are just very, I mean, you, you feel like you get an introduction, right? Mm -hmm. So That's uh, the goal. Yep. yeah, yeah, it, it really, really works well. So how many kids are in the Heart Gallery right now? Do you know? Currently 17 kids on the website. Okay. Yes. So, uh, and that's your specific area of ministry, That yes? is my area of ministry, you, yes. You've, and you've been doing the Heart Gallery how long? Since the launch in October of 2016. Okay. So yes, Art yes. Heart Gallery is your thing. Yes, All right, it cool. is. <laughs> and one more, before we dive in and kind of deep dive on the Heart Gallery, uh, there, uh, do you want to mention the 
Yes. Boutique. The boutique. The yes. boutique. <laughs> so, if you're here in Anchorage, if, if you're here in Anchorage, there's you, a boutique. Go ahead. Yes, if you're here in Anchorage, there is a boutique, and we are located um, off of Arctic at 2807 Arctic Boulevard. That's where the Family Support Center is, and that's where the um, our offices are located, our Anchorage offices. Um, and then we, um, we have co-located there this boutique, and you may donate to the boutique, or you may come and shop. And, um, you know, I'm lucky if I ever take a paycheck home because there's a boutique right next door. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've got all kinds of classy stuff. They've got upcycled stuff. If you're uh, if you're here in Anchorage, it's on Arctic, right between Benson and Northern Lights, right by the McDonald's. Mm -hmm. It's like across the street from the McDonald's on Arctic between yeah. Benson and Northern Lights. Right, and all of the that, um, you know, those donations or, uh, you know, uh, go to the boutique that supports the work. And then if you, you know, um, come shop at the boutique, then you can be sure that... Um, that whatever you spend is going to support the work of um, seeing kids uh, secure in in homes in, in the state of Alaska and supporting families in crisis. Beacon Hill is very cool. We like you guys very much. Thank you, we like you guys too. So let's uh, zoom in on the Heart Gallery specifically since that's your you know area of focus in ministry. Uh, I mean, how how did that come about? How did you, uh, how did you get involved with the Heart Gallery in the first place? Well, I started um, working with Beacon Hill, oh goodness, back in probably May of 2015 was when I was hired on and I was doing um, some non-heart gallery things because the heart gallery didn't exist at that time. I was helping to transport children to and from visits, you know, overseeing, you know, the just the visitation supervision, that sort of thing. And, and so the heart gallery was just really in the formative stages and they needed somebody who would take that on. We thought it would be, you know, maybe one day a week interfacing with folks at, you know, Office of Children's Services. We weren't sure what it would look like like exactly um, in terms of the actual job itself and um, so I have adoption in my own family history and, and so that is how I I guess and I was willing you know to to um, take on something that was brand new you know brand new for me and brand new for Beacon Hill so that was an exciting opportunity so the combination of just maybe an upward and you know um, having a little bit of adoption you know a heart for adoption because of my own family history, you know, I guess, made me the person for the job. So uh, does it work? Have, have any, have kids been adopted? <laughs> uh. Kids have been adopted, yes. Um, so I think we just rolled over 41 adoptions since the 2016 launch, yes. Wow. Yep, so we just had, um, we've had two adoptions this year, um, and the, this last one was just really, really recent in April, yeah. That's, that's amazing, watching God do something like that from something as simple as photos and Yes. And write-ups. Yes. That's really neat. So uh, if you're you know, physically here at the Raspberry Campus, we have a physical heart gallery mm -hmm. that is over there back on that back wall with the photos of kids and the write-ups yep. and everything. Um, we will link to the uh, heart gallery AK uh, mm -hmm. in the ChangePoint app and on our ChangePoint website as well. Uh, so if you're joining us online and you want to check out the heart gallery, you can do it that way. Is, does the heart, the physical heart gallery, is it like on a tour of churches? Like it's just here for the month of May, right? Right. It's just here in uh, at Change Point for the month of May. So it, ideally, it would change locations um, month to month. And of course, we are all very familiar with the less than ideal circumstances that COVID has brought to us. <laughs> so, we, we noticed. Yes, so, we noticed. So we've been largely on hiatus while folks have been uh, been shut down. But we're super excited to to begin to have the heart gallery circulate uh, in the communities again. So we do have one that's um, here in Anchorage. We have one that's in the Matsu Valley. Every now and then we we do like a sad jaunt, you know, over to Soldatna or Homer. And then we've got one that circulates a, in Fairbanks, just a little less, uh, a little less frequent moving from one location to another. So uh, has the heart gallery been at the Change Point Matsu campus yet? No. Oh boy! All right, we're calling out the uh, Change Point Matsu campus. Okay. Uh, you got to do a got to yeah. do a heart gallery display out there. We got yeah. If you got a heart gallery in the Matsu, we have a Change Point in the Matsu. All right, let's do it. There we go. That's good. So over this month of May, as we're kind of you know just being reminded, what are ways uh, if if the members of Change Point have you know passion for this, the Lord stirring in their heart, how can they participate and be a part of what's going on in the heart gallery? 
Okay, so there are a few ways to be involved with what's going on in the Heart Gallery. Um, so uh, first and foremost, if you are a person who's interested in adoption um, and adopting a, a child, then please uh, reach out. We have an orientation that happens about once a month. Um, usually it's on a Saturday morning. Every now and then we will have one on a, on a weekday evening. Just, you know, some folks have Saturday morning obligations to work and other things. So um, we've got one uh, about quarterly that happens on a weekday evening. So definitely reach out um, and, you know, uh, register for an orientation, um, ask questions. You're welcome to just, you know, if you're not even up for coming to an orientation yet, that's fine. There's no obligation of any kind. You can uh, shoot us an email, you know, call and ask questions. Um, if you are a photographer who would like to, um, you know, be involved with photographing youth, that is a really significant way of being involved. Um, there, you know, there are ways to uh, contribute financially and then there is just such a need for prayer um, God moves through prayer and so we would love to have, just have people partner with us and just you know if you just log on the website and and take a look at you know kids who are there and just pray for a specific child or pray for children who have the same need who will never come to the heart gallery that's the way also that you know, mm. we're just really being involved in blessing these these kids mm. that's awesome so uh, the uh, link to the Heart Gallery page is in the ChangePoint app on the This Sunday tab, the like front page of the app. Uh, that will take you through to everything that we've been talking about in this conversation and we'll continue to talk about. So um, this is, you know, this is a, a high, low volume, high impact ministry, right? It's It takes a lot of work and a lot of mm -hmm. detail and a lot of coordination to make a pairing between a child and a family. Yes. Um, but you, this is year five now, mm -hmm. this ministry. What have you seen God do through the Heart Gallery in the lives of children, in the lives of families, mm -hmm. in our community, wherever? Tell us, tell us some God stories. Oh, some God stories. Oh my goodness. Um, uh, so many possibilities. I hardly know where to start. I would have to say that in a general sense, um, it's just really, really hopeful. It's really hopeful um, to uh, for youth to be able to advocate for themselves in this way. It's helpful for um, for workers um, who are uh, looking for homes for kids to um, to just have a place to turn and say, "Hey, do you, you know? Do you know of a family who could be the family for this child?" Um, it's hopeful for families who are wanting to adopt, um, and there's just um, it. it there's just a sense that there's a that there's a path forward, you know. Um, so specifically, we've just um, you know seen siblings get to remain together. Families have been willing to you know like um, to receive five siblings at one hmm. time. You know, we had a, a, a couple years ago, um, we had a group of five siblings who were all adopted together and, uh, and just amazing stories like that. Hmm. So kids who have been in foster care for a long time, it is tough on them. It is tough to, um, uh, to move from home to home uh, sometimes because a foster family can't continue to take care uh, for a child for whatever reason. Um, and uh, often nothing is specific to do with the child. You know, families are, you know, sometimes military or sometimes get an adverse health diagnosis and they have to move and that means the child has to move and that's really tough on kids. So the, just to be years in foster care and then to be adopted and to know that you don't have to move again, that that is your family, that they are there um, thick or thin uh, and, and not just for childhood, but for adulthood, you know, like we don't quit needing our parents just because we turn 18 years old or just because we turn 21 years old, you know, we continue to need our parents. We want them to be the grandparents to our children, you know, as we, as, as we grow and have kids and it's no different for these children. Like it is significant for, for their whole lives. And so to watch that unfold, um, it is just an amazing work of God that he does place the lonely in families that he does heal that he does um, he does take that which what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good it's beautiful to watch and it's um, and it's encouraging to witness the 
ongoing, um, just the, the bravery of youth who continue to advocate for themselves and the, the willingness of families to do what's needed to address the, the grief that children have experienced, um, you know, and the loss that they've experienced. So that is, that is the work that God does, um, and he's doing it through individuals in our community, and it's just amazing to watch. We're in this uh, church-defined message series, and we're looking at the four metaphors in the New Testament of what the church is, and mm -hmm. um, one of them is a family or a household, right? That right. Th throughout, you know, co-heirs with Christ and adopted in the family of God, Jesus himself was adopted, mm -hmm. right? So there's a, there, as you, you were just speaking and talking about that, it, it feels very kingdom of God. Right. It, doesn't it? You know. Right. When we talk about it, you know, it feels very kingdom of God. And, and yet it's just, it's, I, I think about like what it is to be a parent, you know, and what it is to be a parent, even though we understand it, for the children who are born into our homes or whoever, however children come into our homes. Um, I mean, there's a lot of um, there's, a, uh, there can be frustration on both sides. You know, we're all human beings. You know, kids aren't always 100% pleased with parents, and parents aren't always 100% pleased with kids, right? There's a lot of chores. There's a lot of, you know, like working through misunderstandings. There's a lot of. So when we talk about like kingdom of God, like, and and that's, it is that but it's kingdom of God in the daily work of um, serving and forgiving and, um, and trying to understand where somebody else is coming from. Uh, you know, there's a yeah. lot of that. Even, even that though, I mean, it, what I really hear you saying is uh, it requires a big sacrifice, right? Yes. That, to enter the kingdom, which again, feels very kingdomy to me yeah. that someone would need to make a large <laughs> sacrifice for people to come in you know it's just uh, the, the whole pattern there's a there's a you're entering into that that path of jesus right? right and and it's an unconditional thing like god doesn't expect us to be fabulous people before he accepts us into his family like on Thank the God. other hand <laughs> right it's the opposite he says he says you know like i've already done the work join me be a part of my family and we are going to move forward in this thing together and and so we're we're asking the same for for our kids like they they come grieved they come hurting you know, and so to just um, receive them where they are and, and to just love them unconditionally, um, is a, it, is a, it is not an easy thing, you know? I mean, these, you're a stranger to this child, like the, and, and these children are strangers to, to you, you know? And so um, to start from 100% from commitment, but next to no relationship yet, you know, in terms of actually knowing one another, that is a challenging path. It can be a challenging path to walk, but it is, um, it is an amazing thing to watch. That is definitely a kingdom path, though. That is mm -hmm. a gospel, that is a gospel path. Not everybody needs to do it, but for no. those who do, uh, you will meet God there. So that's tremendous. Over the last five years of, you know, leading this ministry, um, kind of zooming in from meta kingdom stuff mm -hmm. to, to you, what has God shown you? What has God taught you uh, just being involved with all these families? Oh, well, he's taught me um, what I think that he, you know, through this process and just through life, right? I guess maybe to some greater or lesser degree, everybody needs to learn this, but maybe I particularly need to learn it, is that um, just doing small things um, when God is involved yield profound results. Mm. You know, like I, there's nothing that I do that is something that nobody 
else could do, right? Like there's a, like like anybody can do what I myself personally am doing. I am making phone calls, I am sending emails, I'm coordinating photographers. Like for me personally, like it's it's a series of very small tasks just done regularly over a period of time, and and yet there are these amazing things that that come out of that work. Like the you know there are photographers taking fabulous pictures. There are um, foster families who are caring for these children. There are adoptive families who come and that, that transition and that support of those families with one another. Um, and, and so God is, is working greatly in the small things. That is a, and, and it's time, it takes time, you know, that, that there's, it's not a hurry. It's a series of small steps over time and he is doing the work. Yeah, that reminds me of loaves and fishes. You, know, you show up with a little bit and he does the rest. It reminds me, it's just uh, yeah, long obedience in the face, same direction, small faithfulness. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. beautiful. And uh, yeah, even making photocopies or phone calls when, mm -hmm. when handed as an offering to God, he can use it to whatever he wants to do. So we're almost out of time. Yeah. Uh, I know, isn't it crazy? Yeah, it's just flown by. It just, it just goes right by. Um, is there anything that you would want to say to your brothers and sisters in Christ, our Change Point family, anything you want them to know or be thinking about, praying about, that I haven't set you up for? Um, I would say, really, if you, if you have an interest in adoption, if you have an interest in foster care, if you, even if it's just a curious interest, you know, even if it's not like, a, I think I might want to do that, I, I think it, if it's just... I may, I may want to know more about that. How does this process work? What are the, the needs of the children? What is required to be an adoptive family? Is there another way that I could be involved? Ask all those questions, like ask all the questions, get them answered. Um, so, um, and if I can't answer them, then I'll send you to somebody who can answer them and we'll just get you, you know, if the, if adoption through, through foster care is a path that you would like to pursue, then we can help get you started on that. But, and so, and, and do that prayerfully, I would say, like, that would be the thing that I would want to just communicate is like, if you have a tug, if you have an interest, um, explore that, you know, see where that goes and pray about it. This is good. So uh, for anybody wanting to accept that challenge, a couple of websites that I will draw your attention to. Uh, one of them is heartgalleryak.com. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That's correct. Heartgalleryak.com to go directly to the Heart Gallery. You can also find out more about Beacon Hill uh, and the boutique and Safe Families for Children and the Family Support Center uh, online at beaconhillak.com. Uh, we will have links to those in the ChangePoint app and online at changepointalaska.com. Sharon, mm -hmm. thanks so much for joining me in the comments. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, I darling. appreciate it. That's great. And thank you as well, ChangePoint family. God bless you. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday.